what happens when the narcissist realises that you have them figured out? Not every individual realises that they're dealing with a narcissist. They may recognise that they're being abused, but they don't really figure out what is going on. They don't recognise that they are being manipulated. They don't recognise that the behaviour towards them is part of some pathological disorder. And therefore, rather than work it out in a way that provides them with a meaningful response, driven by a lack of understanding of what they're dealing with, and of course, the corrupting and obscuring influences of emotional thinking, they remain locked in the relationship, whatever form it takes, with the narcissist, perhaps self-flagellating, sucking up the abuse, perhaps trying to get through with their head down, trying not to set the narcissist off. In other instances, trying to be proactive, trying to please, trying to fluff the narcissist by offering compliments and bending over backwards with regard to the provision of other aspects of the dynamic, all to no avail, of course. Or it might be trying to fix things, going to therapy with the narcissist, encouraging the narcissist to go to therapy alone, going to therapy themselves, believing that they are part of the problem. All of these things do not amount to a realisation of what the individual is actually dealing with. But for some of you, realisation arrives. And you may well realise that this individual is a narcissist. Or you at least recognise that they are an habitual abuser, manipulator, liar, etc. Either way, you have worked out that this person is hugely problematic for you. When this occurs, and invariably this arises during the sustained devaluation, where the victim is an intimate partner primary source, or after many years of shelving behaviour and corrective devaluations for non-intimate secondary sources and a shorter period for intimate partner secondary sources of a shelf variety or dirty little secrets. Intimate shelf appliances tend to realise quicker than non-intimate ones purely because they're more invested in the relationship and if they are going to notice that there is something wrong, truly wrong going on, they tend to notice sooner than the non-intimate. So whether you're the intimate partner primary source, whether you're the intimate partner secondary source of shelf variety or dirty little secret, or whether you're a family member, friend, colleague, etc., a neighbour that's a non-intimate secondary source, there may well come a point that you figure out that the person that you're dealing with is either a narcissist or they are habitually and perpetually problematic. What then? Well, if you don't go down one of the incorrect routes that I mentioned earlier, you may well turn and accuse the individual of being a narcissist, or at least say to them, you are manipulative and an abuser and a liar. What happens when the narcissist knows that you have figured out that aspect of them? Well, the important point to make is this. The majority of narcissists don't actually realise that you've figured out what they are because they don't know what they are themselves. The vast majority of narcissists are lesser and mid-range. They are unaware. Therefore, it is not the case that they stand there thinking, I know I'm a narcissist. Oh, damn, this person has realised what I am. What shall I do about it? Or, I know I manipulate and I lie and I abuse. Goodness me, they've realised that that's what I am. What am I going to do? No. They don't know what they are. And therefore, the accusation is actually a complete revelation to them. They are shocked, amazed, stunned, taken aback. You may well, of course, find this hard to believe, but that's because of your inexperience with regard to understanding narcissism and, of course, the presence of emotional thinking and the understandable fact that you look at this through your own worldview rather than that of the narcissist. But it must be understood for reasons that I've explained elsewhere and shan't go into in this video, that the majority of narcissists, when told that they are a narcissist, or even if they're told they're an abuser and manipulative, do not accept that. They're not laughing into their sleeve going, crikey, she's worked me out, but I'm still going to deny it. They honestly do not believe what they are. 
Of course, when it comes to a an aware narcissist, the greater than the ultra, then we know and we recognize that you have determined what we are. That is a different circumstance. However, the outcome will be the same. That where you accuse an unaware or an aware narcissist, the response will be the first line of the twin lines of the narcissistic defense, namely denial. No, I'm not. What are you talking about? That's nonsense. And therefore, that denial will be issued in order to nullify the threat to control that your accusation poses. If you maintain the accusation that the individual is a narcissist, or if you maintain the accusation that they're a liar and a manipulator, etc., then the denial has not worked, and therefore the narcissist's narcissism will cause the narcissist to fall back to the second line of defense, which is any other manipulation. The narcissist might walk off, rejecting the assertion that you're making that they're a narcissist by moving to the third assertion of control. Or project and accuse you of being the narcissist. Or launch into some physical violence to shut you up. Or go into some long involved explanation by way of a word salad to explain how they are not. Sometimes you might get a mid-range narcissist who would say something like, I understand why you think that I'm a narcissist, and I can understand why you might have reached that conclusion, and I can understand how that might trouble you. Notice there's been no admission so far. And I can see how you would think that there are some similarities there, but I don't think that's quite right. Maybe I'm narcissistic and not a narcissist. Or... Yes, I can understand why you might think that. I suppose there are occasions when I might behave in such a way. I need help. And of course, as you know from my work, this is not a genuine admission, but you're being manipulated further by a mid-range narcissist offering false contrition, false compassion, promise change. And of course, the future faking. Either way... There is no actual realisation by those narcissists that you've worked them out, and instead the conveyance of your knowledge is rejected first by denial and then the falling back to the second line. And therefore, that is what occurs. This accusation of itself will not lead to disengagement where you're the intimate partner primary source. What it may re result in is you being placed upon the shelf where you are a secondary source. Where the main issue arises with regard to a realization that you have somehow figured the narcissist out is actually how you are behaving thereafter, not the allegation that you know what the narcissist is or you know that the manipulator is a manipulator. If your behavior changes as a consequence of your realization then this is when the narcissist either consciously as a greater or ultra or instinctively senses that something is wrong where lesser or mid-range if you keep making repeated accusations you are providing challenge fuel and the narcissist will respond of course by utilizing one of the three assertions of control to nullify the threat to control that you're posing your behavior might change, for instance, that you no longer do what the narcissist wants, that you no longer respond in the way that you once did. Once upon a time, when you got a silent treatment, you ran around after the narcissist. Why won't you talk to me? What's wrong? Please tell me what's the matter. Can we not sort this out? Crying because you hadn't heard. Bombarding the narcissist with messages. Please come home, etc. No longer do you do that. And what actually signals to the narcissist that you figured them out is not so much telling the narcissist what you know, but it is the alteration of your behavior which causes the problem for the narcissist. You see, if you say to the narcissist, I know that you're a narcissist, but then you carry on interacting with the narcissist, other than nullifying the threat in the moment of your accusation that they are a narcissist, there isn't really a problem. You're continuing to provide fuel. You're still under control. You're providing character traits. You are providing those residual benefits. So there isn't an issue there for the narcissist. Sure, your initial accusation of you are a narcissist or you are a manipulator is a challenge fuel and that must be dealt with. 
But once that's nullified, the issue is over. And in that instance, it would only actually be the greater narcissist who knows that you have figured out the narcissist as being a narcissist. It would only be the greater or ultra who'd recognise that. Lower and mid-range wouldn't because of the way that they compartmentalise. The greater problem arises where your behaviour alters over that period of time. So that either you keep making the repeated accusations and or you no longer do what the narcissist wants and or you're just generally not responding in the way that you once did. Therefore, you're not providing us with fuel. Therefore, you're continuing to threaten our control. You might have withdrawn from providing certain residual benefits as well. What then happens? Well, the greater narcissist or the ultra knows that you have figured them out because your behavior has altered. The lesser and mid-range narcissist doesn't consciously know that you figured them out, but instinctively recognizes there is something wrong because there are these sustained and repeated threats to the control. The narcissism recognizes that there is a problem. Where you are the intimate partner primary source, this will result in the devaluation getting worse. The narcissist will initially look to assert control over you by repeated malign behaviours to squeeze you, to tighten the grip, to bring you back under control, to cause you to get out of that behaviour of not doing what we want and to make you respond. Sometimes, after that, you get a switch to a golden period, a respite period where the narcissism selects going overboard to treat you nicely in order to cause your behaviours to change so that you start to respond to us, that you do what we want. Of course, once that has been achieved, then the efficiency of the narcissism is such that that respite period won't last for particularly long because, once again, the fuel becomes stale and control has been obtained, so there's no need to keep expending such high levels of energy on keeping it in place. And thus, you will get back into the devaluation. But it has caused a change in your behaviour, which means that your realisation, although it has occurred, isn't now actually causing a problem for the narcissist. If you're a secondary source, in such circumstances, you are going to be put on the shelf and the narcissist will deal with other people. Accordingly, then, the narcissist will hoover you back off the shelf at a later juncture to basically check if there's been some change in your behaviour. And if not, back onto the shelf each you go. So the initial allegation itself, whilst challenge fuel, is not hugely problematic. It is the shift in your behaviour which signals to the narcissist that you have worked out what you're dealing with. The greater or the ultra will recognise what it actually is. The lesser and the mid-range won't know precisely what it is, but will instinctively realise there is something wrong because the narcissism picks up on this threat to control posed by the alteration of your behaviour. Thereafter... Where you're the shelf, you might get a corrective devaluation and then be placed on the shelf and the narcissist deals with somebody else. Where you're the intimate partner primary source, the devaluation will become more savage and then you may get a respite period as the narcissism seeks to assert control over you. With the primary source, if this fails to cause you to get back into line, fails to cause you to shift your behaviours, then you will be disengaged from. Because where you are, essentially signal through the change in your behaviour that you have figured the narcissist out and thus you have created a fundamental and quite possibly permanent threat to control, the narcissist deals with that threat to control by going to the third assertion, disengagement, and you're jettisoned. Where you're the intimate partner secondary source, then you'll be left on the shelf for longer. There may well then come a hoover at an appropriate juncture and your behaviour may well then accord with coming back under control because following the passage of time and possibly an altered approach from the narcissist that you don't respond in the way that you ought to do or rather you respond in a way that the narcissist requires and you haven't maintained the altered behaviour and thus everything is as the narcissist needs. The fact is, that when the narcissist either consciously or instinctively realises that you have figured them out, the narcissist will at first seek to assert control over you, where this realisation is exemplified by an accusation and more importantly by a change in your behaviour. And then, 
If that cannot be achieved, then the narcissist will disengage where you're the intimate partner primary source and leave you on the shelf for longer where you're a secondary source. And that is what happens. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.